Welcome back to No Be Left Behind video. I'm Brian. We're gonna go over the top three Texas Oktoberfest that you can find this year, 2020. I'm gonna rank them best to third. In my opinion, there are no bad Oktoberfests out of this lineup, out of Shiner, Allstadt, and RAR. Three of my favorites. It's gonna be a final showdown. Which one I like the most? Is that dramatic enough? Is that gonna get me to the top of the YouTube algorithms? We'll figure it out later. Mrs. Brian's gonna help blind pour for me, so I won't know what's in what glass. She will. She has the answers as she mostly does. I look forward to looking like a fool because, as you've heard on the podcast lately, I have a favorite out of the three. Um, I prefer Allstadt. It's new to me this year. It's the first time I'm having it, and it is amazing. However, RAR has won medal after medal after medal after medal at GABF for the best Oktoberfest in the nation. So, we're going to see how it stacks up. Without a further ado, I'm going to have Mrs. Brian help me out. So Mrs. Brian's coming in with a beer now. I can't, Jesus Christ. So, you didn't just pour the three, huh? You You said pour three? I can take all the No, 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 no. We're doing a full Oktoberfest lineup now. I was wondering how you're gonna finish all of them. So you poured every Oktoberfest that we have in the house. You said you wanted to know the best. This is gonna be a real interesting afternoon. We ran out of glasses. Well, this escalated quickly. I've got a notebook here. I guess I'll start ranking these things. All of them look quite the same except for this one, which even though it's in a Glen Cairn glass, so I'm gonna assume that we poured a Weisstefan or Fest beer in this, and I'm like 99% sure that's exactly what this is. Um, I'm just gonna start up here with A. Okay, it smells quite delicious. Okay, a little thin, um, classic. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a, a Euro, one of the Euro jobbers that we have in the house because the other thing is, we have more than just, obviously, more than just Rar, Shiner, and Allstadt. We also have Spaten, uh, Eyinger, Paul Aner, all the Aners, Sam Adams. I mean, Jesus Christ. We're, I, I, I'm just gonna have to rank these and then figure out which one's which, okay? Okay, so A, um, lighter. Not like um, offensively light. Lighter as in like, this is made to be consumed in high volumes, but it's really kind of good. Moving over to B. Ooh, this is like a thick boy as far as malt goes. C, look at a little lighter in color than some of the others, so maybe that, I don't, I don't, these all look almost identical. Almost just disappears altogether. Again, like something that's I can see crushing steins of this all day. I, something tells me that's gonna be said for all of these damn beers, and I'm gonna look like a jackass. Something funky going on there, like on the hops with the back end, like on the back end. Not my not my favorite, but still light, airy, and enjoyable. Oh, getting to the fourth of the nine beers. Ooh. This one smells like it came from Europe in a green bottle. <laughs> Just a slight like hint of light struck. What's wild about light struck? If you ever uh, smell like Corona, oh, no, it's skunky. Cool, that's fine. It comes in a clear bottle. But what's wild is your nose adapts to it so quickly that the first time you smell it, you're like, oh, it's terrible. And the next time you smell it, it could be gone. One's gonna go down there pretty far for me. That one might be, that one's in last place. I'm just like diving in for tasting these. What the fuck? This one tastes like floral is all hell. Like I'm running through a field of flowers floral. That is not as enjoyable as I would like. That's the thing, like uh, to keep in mind for all of these beers, my judgment, my tasting notes, uh, my ranking, they're all dependent on the beer that I'm tasting right now here today. It could be that the example that you're tasting or you've tasted this year could be completely different, but I can only go off of what's in these glasses. Moving on, F my life as we're going through nine of these damn things. Boo. Move over to F. Looking a little darker, looking a little maltier. This one tastes like it has like American hops in it. Like you get this like little touch of pine on the back end. But you know what? It's not offensive and it goes away quickly. I don't hate that. I wouldn't be able to crush pints of it, I don't think. Or liters. Yes. Okay, so I've got two more. G and H. Up with G first. I can fuck with this. Okay. 
Yes, it's malty. Yes, it's got a little like little hop spice to it. I'm not hating that. I need to be careful. I drink that whole damn glass. I like that a lot. Okay. And finally, the last of the Oktoberfest, like traditional Oktoberfest. Ooh, hello. It's almost like a weird like hint of spearmint gum. I, I like this. Just the smell. Is it dab a little on my neck? No. Oh. Nope, never mind. No, I mean, when I say this is tea like, I mean like, not Lipton, like, I don't know, some fancy English tea probably. It's not bad. That's what I want to capture in the tasting of all of these. None of these are bad. The flavor descriptors might not sound great, but I have to have some marker for me to identify each beer from the other because they're all so close. Um, I guess let's cover the Fest beer real quick while we're at it. I'm, I'm gonna take a wild leap and say one of these beers is not like the other and I'm covering it up like a moron. Like they're two different color beers. I hope you can see that. I guarantee, knowing what beers we have in the house, this has got to be Weichstefaner Fest beer. Yes. And it's like a Hellas. Like it's fantastic. It's a great beer. <sighs> Let's get to knocking these things out. I can tell you straight away my least favorite beer is probably gonna be D. See, C and E were right there on either side of the, the worst. Okay, C is the least offensive out of the ones I've identified. Yeah, let's go H, number seven. C, I'm gonna say number six. F, the one that I identified with American hop, like that I tasted American hops in. Yeah, that's gotta be five for me. Top four, let's see what we got. Just gonna go through rough and dirty style, okay? Okay. I can already tell you by smell. We're in a good lime in here. My God, that's so good. That was eight, by the way. Nothing wrong with that either. Both of those are so damn fine. Girl, you're so damn fine though. E's got a little like serious herbal note to it as well. I'm gonna go with E, number four. And then honestly, these top three could be interchangeable. They're all three top of the tops for me. Um, but honestly, the way they're poured here, A, B, and G, I'm gonna line these up and then I'm gonna go get Mrs. Bryan and have her reveal to me how probably wrong I am in my favorite Oktoberfest beers. Okay, so she's gonna read off A and I'm gonna reveal where that beer ranked in my lineup, okay? Okay, so. Beer number A. <laughs> Beer letter A. Which one is it? Polliner. Boom! Okay, Polliner actually came in as my number one choice. Vindicated. Uh, something brown. No. Something rated. You know what I'm talking about. That's for you, Frank. What's 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 number B? Sam Adams, Oktoberfest. Holy shit, that came in number D for me. Wow. Mrs. Bryan is gonna help me take care of the rest of these beers because yep. as we open them, we live that no beer left behind lifestyle. So once we open it, it gets finished. What's letter C? All stat. Oh shit. This was my favorite Oktoberfest of this year and I just ranked it number six. What is number D, letter D? Spatten. So D was actually my least favorite. It ranked absolute last and I'm I'm fine with this. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure, rewind the tape, that's the one I identified as being in a green bottle. Moving forward, what's E? Sierra Nevada. No shit. F. Rar and Sons. Okay. Now, nope, there goes my Texas best idea, because Rara had ranked at number five. And you know what? I also identified it as American hops. I'd be interested to see what their hop bill is. Anyway, moving on. Letter G. Eyinger. Yeah. G was eyeing her. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Okay. Woo! Every year, it is one of my favorite Oktoberfests to drink. Um, I drank a 64 ounce growler of it a couple weeks ago. No shame. I'm glad I picked that. Maybe as... you should be ashamed. No. H. Shiner. That is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, where did you rank Shiner? It was number seven. And then you know what? Without saying anything, I know what I was. I knew what I was. It's Weichstefaner. The Fest beer? Yeah, what was I'm that? glad you were able to say that because I was looking at it like, this is going to be fun. Can I ask you a question? Sure. D 
Did you intentionally lay out that Stone Cold Steve Austin blanket so that it could be seen? Your services are no longer needed, hmm. so you can go. Hmm. Are you judging my Stone well, Cold Steve Austin blanket? Yeah. So here's the deal. The people love Stone Cold. There are people okay. who live for- I'm sorry. Who are the people? Jay. It's really Jay. The other people haven't noticed it yet, but when they do, they will appreciate it as much as Jay. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Brian. Okay. Thank you so much. If you like this video, I know you're going to like the podcast. You can find us, No Beer Left Behind, on your favorite podcast app. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe over on those podcast apps. Be sure to subscribe either on YouTube or on Instagram, wherever you're seeing this. For Brian, here in North Texas, I'm out.